but if you analyze it, it's really only this big. Okay. We're all set? Okay. All right, the meeting will come to order. This is a regular meeting in East Adam Planning and Zoning Commission, September 11, 2018. Can I have the attendance, please? Barry Brownell, absent. James Curtin. Here. Kevin Matthews. Here. Harvey Thomas. Here. Bernard Gillis. Here. Louis Salfka. Here. Ed Govins, absent. Richard Pettinelli. Here. And Jose. Here. Okay, I don't know where we were. We're substituting, but uh, okay, so we got two guys. Okay, Joe, you for Crary, and uh, Rich for uh, Ed. Okay. Uh, moving on to minutes, we don't have any. And so I'm just going to pass minutes. them out so we can okay. review them next meeting. Okay, so we'll just work on these at the next meeting, reading material. <coughs> Moving on to bills. We have oh, no we have, bills. We have it. Okay. My, my bump? Your bump. You're still going to go home? Oh, can't go home. I want to hear from the rest of the... Uh, okay. Uh, do we have bills? No bills. No bills. Okay, none. For that, we're moving on to site plan review. New, number 18-13, Roger Never Got Agent, Curry Barnell Owner, Basin Road, site plan review for a new single family home to be constructed in the Lake District. Uh, assessors map 57, lot 114. good as it's going to get for the public and us. Okay, so this is uh, an application for site plan review for a new single family residence. Uh, 3.1 acre parcel that's on Patient Lake and it's accessed uh, off of Patient Road via a right of way across state property and property of the uh, So this is an overall, just to give you an idea. This is the state property where the dam is located. And um, there's a right of way that comes in off the Basin Road that services this lot. The lot in question I shaded in yellow, that's the three, three acre lot. And it comes across here and follows uh, the north property line of the neighbors of the state. And then it eventually gets onto this property, which again is shown in yellow. Um, so it kind of gives you the idea of, of where it is. This is Basin Lake. And the way the plan is, this is a 40 stamp, but the plans are done at 1 inch equals 20. I need to show the required detail. And there's two plans with match lines. The first plan you're going to see starts off at Basin Road and covers about half of this area here. Road north in this case is straight down, and this is an existing driveway for the Merzeszewski property. Their house is located here, near the first property after the state property. So there's a short distance across the state property, 
and then it goes across 133 Mission Road as this property, and it runs along a 25-foot access way that's nestled on the north property line. And <clears throat> at some point, it's a shared driveway, but then where the 133 driveway uh, bears outside the right-of-way to their house, we split off and we stay uh, parallel to the north property line and the right of way. And then we continue along here. Now, there is grading associated with it right now. The grades are not um, conducive to putting a driveway in. And the town has a, the zoning has a 12% maximum grade. So while we'll maintain the existing grade through here where it's a common driveway, because obviously um, we don't want to disrupt the existing driveway, but down in this area here, where the topography climbs up and then back down again, we will have to do a cut. And fortunately, we're able to keep the cut in the two-foot range. I think that's about average. I don't think there's any excess more than two-foot cut. In there. And then there's a fill over here that's about two feet. And then as you continue towards the property, this dash line represents a dash line that continues the driveway and continues the road. skirt that to the degree we can. We have to uh, fill wetlands for the driveway, but fortunately we're able to keep the grade such that we don't have to do any filling within the vernal pool area. And then we come across and we're going to um, access a house that is really located at the pretty much extreme south end of the property because that's where the lake is and that's where the views are. So it's a very long driveway to get to that point. And so I'm just going to follow with my finger along the driveway location. And it gets up to here. Here's the lake, the dark shaded area. This is a potential house. Um, I should say that uh, the owner applicant, Curry Brownell, has, uh, does not intend to build a house on this property. My understanding is he will sell the property. And there'll be a future buyer will then you know, decide the exact shape of the house. I can tell you it's going to be restricted to a three bedroom, and that's just a function of the septic system design. Um, but uh, so we do access. Uh, there is, uh, again, most of the grade changes are in the two foot range, with the exception of this area down here, because there's a steep rock knoll, and in order to get the grades within the 12%, we need to change the grades. So this area here, there's one short area near this culvert where there's actually going to be a six-foot cut. Doesn't last very long. We're out of it pretty quickly, but that is the only area where I'd say you'd have uh, significant grade changes to access the property. So it would be serviced by its own well, which would be located up in here. And the septic system uh, is actually quite far from the house, and that's a function of the soil conditions there. Most of this land, um, honestly, is shallow depth to ledge. And so the soil tested, testing really indicated one location that was suitable for septic, and that's this area down in here. Now, you know, the good news is it's downhill from the house, so gravity system and uh, but it will be limited to a three bedroom house just because of those requirements uh, so given that in April uh, we received approval from the wetland agency for work within the 100 foot upland review zone and uh, the septic system was reviewed by the Chatham Health District uh, they had several uh, required changes and several recommendations, which uh, we, we 
made the changes they required, and we also made the recommendations. They were, they were uh, categorized in the file, but they were, there were revisions, which is uh, So basically, um, we're asking for approval for at some future time a single family residence on this property. It's in the L zone. That's why we're here. And um, there's, the next sheet has details on erosion control. Um, you know, in the area where the wetland is, we're going to uh, double up with uh, fence, but state pay bales and deposit for double protection. Um, and Those will show you where the erosion control measures are. There's details on the driveway for the most part. Your regulations mandate uh, where we have to pay. So the 10%, greater than 10% is paid. It's less we have an option. So we've shaded light gray are the areas where we, we, uh, we don't have the option. We don't have to have to pay. But there are areas where it's not mandated. So that's the project. There's any questions? You're showing that uh, a leaching field for, is that for gutter drains or is that, it looks like the uh, footing drain? Right. Up near the house, there's a, there's a infiltration system. That is for gutters. That's gutters. for the uh, roof runoff. But Stone wall at the entrance area to the north. Yeah. Is that stone wall acting as a retaining wall now? It is. Okay. Uh, so that's why your contours don't look like they're working. <laughs> yeah, so what happens is if you look at the existing contours, uh, they hit the wall. And then drop like two feet. And then the feet. one down, it doesn't continue yeah. because it's a retaining wall. Okay. Although once you get further along in here, they do cross. But in that stretch, it's a I thought you had a four Probably foot four, bust. Four or five feet. That, that looks about right. Okay. And the telephone pole that services 133, that is an easement? Oh, uh, yeah, that would be a power easement. Um, I would suspect, although I wouldn't guarantee that we this lot would stay overhead to that point, and then from that point on, would go underground. Unless the ledge dictated that in certain areas it wasn't practical to go back to pole. Now that driveway at the entrance out there is that you're showing that's is that shading that you're talking there is that the part that's paved or what is that? That, that was a little tricky because obviously that's that's a common driveway. Okay. So we would offer to reconstruct that and repave it. But we want the uh, agreement with the neighbor. Yeah. If they elected that, don't touch the driveway. And you can just, I mean, obviously, we need to have it for access. Mm -hmm. And it'd be better if we could reconstruct it. Grades wouldn't change if we reconstructed as it is now. I was uh, just looking at the anti tracking pad, is way up and uh, beyond that section. So. We have a kind of an interesting situation here because the entrance is already paid. Okay. So, so that so you set it up beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it's not the the part that's paved. Is that exactly where the driveway is going to be in the, the final driveway for, for the, this lot? I would say from Nation Road. Yep. To the point where the you see how we changed the paving here. The shading is dropped off to indicate mm -hmm. beyond that we don't need paving. Mm -hmm. So it would be paid from that point back to Bayshore Road. Okay. That's, that's a function of the grades. It's also a function of the regulations that say a common driveway has to be paved to the split point. I'm just wondering, where, where's the existing pavement exactly? It's, you know, you have to look kind of close, but it's, it's, it, the driveway is... 
It oh, I see the line. I see. Yeah, I'll see. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. That would put us outside the right way. So yeah, okay. Move it a couple of feet. Mm -hmm. And it's the existing driveway showed us two light lines. If you look closely, you can track. Mm -hmm. I see it now. Yeah, okay. The composite silk fence, that's permanent? No. No, that's basically what it is. is it's a double fence uh, for construction purposes. Usually you see a silk fence down gradient. Mm -hmm. In this case, you'll see a silk fence, and then backed up tight to it will be state pay bales. So basically, it's, a, it's additional protection just because we're in a sensitive area. When the vegetation is reestablished and the construction is done, all of that goes out. Silk fence, composite silk fence, goes out. Okay. The width is 10 feet? On the it's like 12 foot. 12 foot? Okay. This, uh, this turn right after the uh, left one, that's, that's a pretty sharp curve. This curve here? Yeah. Yeah, that, that is established uh, as a minimum 50 foot radius, which is what fire equipment is. Okay, yeah, that was my. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else with other questions for the applicant? Uh, there's, there's no area to pull off at two cars or uh, going in opposite directions. There, there isn't, uh, well, I look at it this way. There's a stretch of the driveway that will have. What's the total length of the driveway? It's about uh, 1,400 feet. 1,400. Now, about the first, the, the first part of it has the potential for two houses to use it. So that would be where you would expect to have a lay-by or a pass-by. But that's where we're in the right-of-way. So we have a 25-foot right-of-way. We cannot really provide that. Excuse me. Boy, it's even more difficult. It's a 20-foot right-of-way. And uh, so we don't have that option. Mm -hmm. Once you get beyond the break point, you know, it's single, one single family. Not just you. Now, I, I would say this, if it became an issue, once we got beyond the vernal pool area up in here, we could do, we could do that. We had the grade, grades reasonable, and, and we could do it. We didn't because it, it's, a, at that point, it's a single family residence. But you're almost at the house at that point also. And you're almost at the house at that point. Yeah. And I noticed there's a driveway off to the right, immediately off of Basin Road. Is that, would that be part of the common? No. Ownership and common <laughs> very and that's that goes to a house that's that's over here. So So the common driveway starts where? This is this is uh let's make sure I get this right. This is the street line here. This dark line. So that's actually town on the property. And then go a little further to this line here, this lighter kind of dash line. That's, that's the end of the state property, the beginning of the 130 property. So to answer your question, that driveway is on town right of way. Right. And <coughs> yeah, I guess you, you, you could consider it. That's a tough call. I don't know whether you consider that part of the town driveway or not, because it's still on the town property. But the the, the Existing neighbor and prairie would uh, share this common driveway, and they would have there would be language associated with that, and uh, maintenance and the like. Yeah, similar to uh, your your language that on the yeah. Honey, Honey Hill Ridge subdivision yeah. where yeah. they had a common driveway. Yeah. Anybody else? Any questions for the applicant before we? I'm not, I'm not open to the public yet, but you'll get your chance, sir. Yes, um, sir. No. If not, then we have. What do you have for paperwork? Well, first thing, also too, it is a site plan, so it's not a public okay. hearing. I know, but I'm going to want to hear what the answer is. Okay. Person. I just want to make sure clear for the record. So I have two two letters in the file. Uh, one from the East Adam Inland Wetlands and Watercourse Commission, uh, dated May 9th. Application W18-08 Basin Road. Uh, Query Brownell, new driveway, new septic system, and construction of a new single family home in the Upland Review area. Assessors map 57, lot 
114, dear Mr. Brownell, the East Adam and the Wetlands and Water First Commission, at their regular meeting held on April 17, 2018, voted to approve your application for the new driveway, new septic system, and construction of a new single family house in the Upland Review area with the following conditions. One, a note will be placed in the plans that shows the pipes under the road that crosses the wetlands that states will be you will be continuing maintenance to keep the pipes from being clogged and restricting flow. Two, uh, the lines of clearing shown on the plans dated April 17th, 2018 shall be adhered to. Any plans to go beyond this line of clearing will require additional in the wetlands and water first commission review. Please note through prior to construction, if required permits must be obtained from the Chatham Health District Zoning Department and Building Department. Sincerely, Randolph Till, Chairman. I have a question for you. You refer to 18-08 uh, in the beginning? W, wetlands 18-08. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because they, when they come in simultaneously, the work. Yeah. yeah. So there's a W in front of it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we had two versions of... Uh, Reviews from the Chatham Health District, was, which Mr. Nemer got reviewed, and the latest one received today is from Jim Karenberg, a registered sanitarian. Uh, please see below the list of comments and observations concerning the subject matter. Uh, the proposed location of the well and septic system meets the Connecticut Public Health Code sections 1913B51D and 1913B50E103D, respectively. And two, uh, there'll be a need to review the house plans in conjunction with the pot plan for compliance at the time of the submittal of a building permit. Uh, sincerely, James McCarenberg. All the other comments from his um, August 30th have been addressed. So those are the two that I have in the file. And if approved, this is good for two years? Well, the right site years. plan is good for five years. Five years. Okay. And okay. <coughs> Harvey? There's a note on the plan here that refers to what is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It refers to the little neck of the wetlands that almost reaches. And um, it seems to say that um, you, the applicant is required to make that crossing good for Little creatures. Is that roughly correct? Oh, uh, yes. That's all I got. What does that mean exactly? Well, in order to, when we stabilize the inlet and outlet of the culvert, mm -hmm. we traditionally do that with riprap. And usually the riprap is a modified riprap, which is six inch diameter. Yeah. And that's kind of tough to navigate. So we're, in this case, we're going to use the modified riprap, and we're going to choke the voids with the smaller stone, so it's a smoother surface. Okay. So you're not going up and down these six-inch stones. You're going over the substance. With your so little lizard uh, legs. Yeah. So one-inch stone's going to stay? One-inch, yeah. I think it's one or one and a half. One so it's not going to get washed away? No, it'll be locked in. It's only going to fit in the pockets of the Bigger riprap. Stone. I mean, if it was by itself, it had the potential. But can't be much of a flow there. It's just it? going in the pockets of where the riprap are. So I, I don't anticipate that. Well. Anybody else on the board? Is there anyone else in the audience who'd like to speak regarding this? Or, I mean, just to identify yourself on the record, please. I'm Charles Pujewski. I'm the landowner of so I, I just had a couple of information questions for Roger for here. Um confirm like some of the things that I just said. You know. So the, the the surface of the driveway where it's not shown as paved, is, is it dirt? Is it is it gravel? What what is it? It's a processed tanker bit on a gravel base. So gravel, you know, you are familiar with gravel. Yes. And the best thing to do is top that off something that locks and binds. And that's what the process of aggregate does. Um, it'll pack almost like pavement. Um, and much more stable in terms of maintenance. Um, second question was, do you envision that in any part of this, and I'm not worried about the house lot, but along my property line or on my property, is there any blasting required, do you think, to, to accomplish any 
No, no, I don't anticipate any blasting for two reasons in that area. Gray changes in my own two feet or so. And based on um, looking at the land there, there's that depression where somebody yes. dug it out and yeah. there wasn't any evidence of much. I don't see any blasting in this area once we get back to the yeah. back to the area. No, the, um, I don't know what an anti-tracking pad is. <laughs> so I assume that the anti-tracking pad is what you use to get over the various uh, uh, contour changes, over the, the, the various elevations and depressions. What it is, is basically when you're working on a site and you haven't got your driveway gravel in, right. you just rough graded. Right. That dirt is silty and will stick in the truck wheel treads. And what happens is it gets it gets stuck to the tires, and then as you drive off, it, it just cleans itself and drops it wherever it goes. Sometimes you've probably been on town roads where you see a construction site and there's a track. Yeah. So what this the tracking pad is simply a, an apron, it's usually about 50 feet long of stone, trap rock or two-inch stone. And it kind of digs the dirt off the tires and shakes them. So it's basically trying to clean the tires before it gets out on the pavement. Okay, and does that stay there then forever? Yeah. I mean, that's not part of the road. No. So, so then you end up with the with the gravel and the yeah. aggregate. Yeah, that's yeah. a temporary feature, just like the silt. Okay, and then with regards to the old septic mound, which is, is a fairly prominent feature. So how do you, to, to accomplish the elevation changes, is that where you said you're going to dig out two feet? Uh, well, we're not we're not a hundred percent sure where that leasing system is, but we know it's in that area. It could be part of the construction. So, typically, what happens is if they're excavating in that area. Um, I think they're probably will be some excavation in that area. Any septic area that's encountered a septic leach, old leasing system will be removed and trucked off site. Okay, I think the leaching the old leaching system is on the west side of the septic mound. I don't think there's anything on the uh, on closer to Bayesian Road. If we went the other way, I think. Um, so, so I'm, but I'm just curious, like, in terms of getting up over that septic mound. So, is this, is this a matter of care? Is this, how, how are you actually? Well, it's, it's a combination, actually. As you approach it, it's a bit of a cut. Because what happens is the grade is like this, right. and you can only go up like this. Right. So you actually, in order to do that, you, when you get near the top, you're going to have to cut. And that's where the cut takes place. And the same thing happens on the way down. You can't go as steeply downhill right. as you would like, so then that's the hill on the, on the downhill side. So on the road side, it's cut once you get to the ground, okay, as you proceed further back. Okay, do, do I understand from the little squiggly lines that the full 20 foot easement's not going to be used or cleared? Is that, is that what those little squiggly lines are? Those are uh, the proposed clearing limits. In other words, that is what we would anticipate would have to be cleared to, to take care of the driveway and the grading. Right. And I think you heard one of the wetland conditions was uh, there's a change in the proposed clearing limits. that if you're doing a two-foot cut, you're going to, they're very large, I don't know, 40, 60 feet tall or something, and they're right near my house. Those are the pines? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm concerned that that will destabilize those and have it fall on my house or something, which would be a very bad thing. Um, what do you think about that? Well, you know, I did go out there the day after okay. we talked, and I saw those trees, but honestly, no, it looks like they're, well, I think they're, I mean, the ones I looked at, didn't have very much in the way of needles on them. I think they're gone. I, I think they're probably, I don't want to say they're dead because I'm not a tree expert, mm -hmm. but I think they're beyond. I think that that issue is over. I think they've got some other. Okay, I'm not so concerned about killing them. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about destabilizing them. Okay. Uh,
You know, the ideal thing would be that to address that at the time of the driveway shooting construction, constructed in like a neighborly way, where maybe the buyer would do it, maybe we do the cost sharing. So that's I think that was just okay. So that's left for posterity. Um, um, Twelve years of litigation, and uh, the, uh, in all of it, in each trial, the, the judgment was always that the baseline from where you measure was the center line of the stone wall on the Lanary side. So, in a couple of places on your map, I see what, what I think is the, the, the line for the easement coming farther in. We took the limits of the easement as we understood it based on the court proceedings. Okay, well, there could be some discussion about that at the time because, the, the, like, like, let me let me just show you here. Here's here's Lamary's uh, wall, right, and the line is inside the stone wall. That was never you know, the stone wall between us was always. The start point for the 23. That's the stone wall there. That's the limit of course. This is which is the stone wall right here. Right, and 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 so the line, the black line is the easement, right? It should be on the stone wall, not inside the stone wall. Yeah, I, I again, in consultation with the owner's attorney. Okay, well, can I, I just, my name is Adele Mijewski. We we have a plan that was actually seen by the courts, and it actually shows that on that line. I mean, it's, it's been recorded in the town on a different line from the one that appears. It was done by Lamary's uh, surveyor, not even mine. So um, I'm just, it, 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 the only reason I ask about it is because there's one point where, in the garage, where you show the line for the easement actually coming across the stone wall on my side, which is not going to happen. That stone wall is going to stay there. Um, so I, I, you know, I think there's, I don't know if Attorney Jezik wants to say anything I, about this. I, he, he may want to still make one comment, but I'm yeah. looking at that area where you're talking about. Right. Can map. you point out on the map what you're uh, talk, referring to, Roger? Uh, that is, like, no. that's this area no. here. I don't think we can see it here, right? Too little. Thank you. It's near the mountain line, and uh, mm -hmm. if, if you look at that, that happens to be an area where, it's flat and there's no cut or fill required there. So we do, I mean, I, if, if it came to that and there needed to be shifted, I believe it still could be shifted and stay within the right of the line. Okay. So the, the, uh, the right of way average width is 20. I mean, that's that one jogged area where it gets, obviously, there's a little jog there. But the average width of it is 20 all the way? On the driveway is proposed to be what, 10 or 12? At, at that point, there are stone walls found on each side. Yeah. And so, if, to take the boundary to the inside of the stone wall, then makes possible the area to be used for the creation of driveway, ripping out the other stone wall. And that's something that we would like to see not happen. Okay. And, and I don't think it conforms to what the court decided in terms of where the line should be. I mean, it looks to me like we're talking maybe a foot or two. Yeah, it's not, it's not a big deal. It's just the question is the preservation of the stone wall. That's all. I guess my position in this would just be to see that whatever's on the plan, you know, is likely what the purchaser is going to see and say, this is what I can do. And so it would just be good to have that clarified at this point. I, I agree with that. Okay. Mr. Jesnick, you're here. Do you... Uh, have anything to comment about? I am Attorney Scott Jezik. Um, I represent Mr. Brownell. I litigated the 12 years of cases. Uh, I don't know that it merits repeating. Um, it was somewhat complicated. I'll make just a few comments to give a little perspective. Uh, the driveway up until the vicinity of the Vernal Pool was a town road 
that came out at, for those of you that remember, at Bailey's Beach, off of Smith Road, in 18, through the 1860s. At the end of the Civil War, the dam was raised at Bation Lake and submerged that road uh, from just to the west of the Vernal Pool, all the way over to Bailey's Beach, and that's that Brooks Cove where you're probably familiar with it, Bailey Road. Uh, was created as a result. So there was an old roadbed here all along. The, the litigation <laughs> covered so many issues, and one of the issues was where the 20 feet was to be measured. Now, there was a stone wall on the south side, a so-called Lanieri side, which would have been a practical place I'm not going to get into everybody's argument, but um, the Mezhuzevskis were zealous in their prosecution of certain issues, the result of which, excuse me, I would characterize to their detriment, they can speak for themselves, found the 20 feet measured south on the center line of the old road. And so the new driveway is not fully in the bed of the old road until the jog area that is referenced about three quarters of the way in. Up to that point, it gets measured from the center line of the road. That's just the way it is. That's the result of the litigation. Yes, there were maps that the Lanieri's filed. I don't know, um, I don't see any Lanieri's here. I don't know what their position is. I don't represent the Lanieri's. Okay. I didn't represent them in the litigation. This is the way the, the, the court judgment reads after the long years of multiple lawsuits, three lawsuits, all through the appellate court, this is the result. Okay, so in other words, the boundary of the proposed easement, uh, everyone's in agreement you're just going to follow what the lawsuit agreed to, despite that you may disagree at some point. But that's okay with everybody? I mean, as far oh, I, as I think, that, I think that's a, a, a true statement. We're not okay. looking to do anything okay. other than what the court judgment okay. says. All right. and then you can argue about what that is later. But from our point of view, the easement belongs on what it was been agreed upon in court. Okay. Well, so Whatever that, that might be. I, I just want to clarify that. It was not agreed upon in court. Okay, it's a settlement. It was a contested issue. No, it wasn't settled. It was litigated. And the court found it. No. As such, as a matter of fact, I don't mean to complicate this, but when the last of the three lawsuits was filed and the appeal was taken to the appellate court, Mr. Brownell did not participate in the appeal because, frankly, we didn't care where the 20 foot. We were very comfortable with it being measured up against the, the stone wall on the north side with Lanieri. It made a straight line. We didn't have to make that jog that you see in, inside. But in point of fact, the court said up until that point it was from the center line, uh, which is what the old deeds had said. So that's the way it ended up, and that's why there's that little tightening and jog as you described earlier. And that, that's, that's the way it is. That, that is probably not my client's preference, but that's the way it is. Okay. All right. Well, just, I just have to turn okay. to Jessica. Go ahead, um, sir. We're not, I'm not questioning the part of the driveway that is uh, east of the old septic mound. I'm talking about the driveway all the way back by the garage. Right, where, that's, where that's, it really gets close to the wall yeah, on your side. And, and yeah. that's where it's not showing the Lanary wall as the, as the boundary line of the easement. And that's where it should be. So, Scott, I think you're, you're looking at the wrong side of the road there. Um, well, at any rate, just so, as a board, we're familiar with what we're talking about as far as where it belongs. I mean, you know, whatever the agreement was at the end, or the judgment was. Right now, it's about a foot off the wall. Okay. There's room to move it another foot or two okay. to preserve the to wall. To still be within the 20 feet and yeah. preserve the wall. Okay. It being a driveway. Yes, the 12 foot driveway. Okay. All right, anybody else on the commission with any questions for? Uh, the applicant? No. You have no more paperwork for us? Okay. Just the conditions of the Inland Wetlands Commission and the Chatham Health District. Okay. Anybody want to?
jump right up and <laughs> why not? Okay. Let me try. You gonna do it, Ozzy? I was gonna go ahead. Uh, age first. <laughs> Does that make you beauty? <laughs> Uh, I make a motion to approve application dash 13, Roger Nemega, agent, uh, Carrera Brownell owner, Bayshin Road, site plan review for a new single family home to be constructed in the Lake District. Assessors map 57, lot 114, pursuant to the uh, conditions in the letters from inland wetlands and Chatham Hills. I'll second that. Good. Okay, Make motion remains a second. Any further discussion? Go ahead. Would you be amenable to um, modifying your motion to include that the um, driveway will um, conform to the uh, applicable court decision? I think that's yeah, fair. That's yeah, fair. No enough. problem yeah, with that. I'd like to maintain the okay. Board. Just, just the so phone. we've modified the motion. Oh, whatever the court said, we do. Who seconded? Yes. Who seconded that one? I did. Okay. Perfect. Are you willing to second the modified motion? Yeah. Okay. That's been motion been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Moving on to change. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> motion to change order of business. Right, so move. Okay, and a second. second. Oh, that's right. We got bumped. Okay. All in favor? Still All right. All right. Okay. On to discussion. Uh, plan of conservation development. Or I'll make there. Well, no, we don't we have, have time a, for much. We have a meeting tomorrow. Okay. Right. So this is the. Meeting, meeting room number four. This is the handout. So we got an email. I hope you guys got it email wise, but I printed out. Yes. Good, when did you email? Last it's week, two weeks ago. It's a good thing. Yeah, mine doesn't print color. I like yours. Yeah. So you did see it, so I'm not losing. Yeah, no. Okay, you, thank you. I did. Okay. You sent three so to read your Yeah. Come on. Okay, so that's tomorrow. Second thing I have from you um, for the. WP, or not WPCA for the uh, Sir? For gateway. Okay. For the gateway. Uh, Attorney Brands isn't happy with us. No, with, with them. Oh. Attorney Brands represents us. Adam, um, who else has gotten this list? Old Saybrook. Uh, so we basically sent out a blast. Said, don't accept these things. So you can read that through. So we need to. He says, don't accept them. He goes, and he found a slew of things that are just not making anybody happy. Did you have a meeting with Liz Glidden? I didn't even get into that because once he wrote that letter, he said, hold yeah, on. Yeah, I've done with them until they figure yeah. out what they're. So, I mean, he's also advising them, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, and he says they should have obtained legal counsel before writing. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you. For, for the record. <laughs> yeah. um, there you go. For the record, it was represented at the gateway meeting at which I resigned that Attorney Brantz had reviewed these things, which either he reviewed them and then had second thoughts or whatever. But I, I can tell you from the language written and what we looked at, he did not. Because there's just too many open-ended questions that we pointed out in our review. And the last thing I have is we had the question about what is the guy going to put up in the back of the thing for the coffee roast. Oh, yeah. And so all it is is a carefree building. It's away from the road. Okay. Um, and he's going to use 33% of it or 96 square feet for that coffee roaster. Okay. So the question came out, do you want to see him under special exception or do you just want me to do an in-office review? I, I'm good with it that way, but that's up to you guys. What, do you, what does everybody think? I don't see the hard one. You, got, you guys are all here for the meeting. Go ahead if you want in here, right? Okay, so what about, what do you think, Lou? I don't think I was here for the meeting. Oh, you weren't here either? Okay, how about Bernie? I don't think it's an issue, right? Yeah. Okay, so I mean, it's kind of straightforward. We just wanted to know yeah. specifically what is he putting up here? Exactly. Was that on the site plan? 
No, we, we didn't know what the building was, and that was why we said, well, yeah. what is he actually putting up there? Right. So that we would know. So it's a carefree building with this little roaster. But it's in the but far back At corner. some point, it's going to oh, be on the site. Oh, it is so. on the site. Oh, okay. okay. And he has a better one okay. you know, okay. that I handed out last month. But he did, have some, he did have some um, idea of expanding. The future, but that we That's, all agreed. That's if he's doing that, he's coming back with another right, application. Exactly, right. But for this, for this, I, I don't, I don't yeah, have a I don't problem with it. All right, what do you think? The coffee room. I don't think it's necessary to have him come and show yeah. us this picture. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good idea. <laughs> Joe, you agree with that? Or? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's just go along, and you handle it, Jim. That's what you're talking about. Now that we know what he had in mind. Okay, it's already 8 o'clock. I'm assuming that's correct. New, new clock, is it right or not? 8 o'clock, right? I was right in the right now. Yep. So that thing is actually wrong. All right, we'll be moving on to the public hearing. And Kevin, did you call, call yeah. for that? Yep. Uh, the Town of East Adam, uh, the East Adam Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday. September 11, 2018, at 8 p.m. at the Municipal Office Complex, meeting room 12, One Plains Road, Moodus, to hear the following. Application 18-11, Town of East Haddam, One Plains Road, Special Exception Review for Public Improvement of Athletic Fields, Assessors Map 56, Lot 38. At this hearing, interested persons shall be heard and correspondence received. Set right. Okay. New copy of the old that copy. No. I can. There's a couple more. Yeah. Come on down there. You can have one now. We want your comment. Can you switch me out? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Now you. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, who wasn't here for this one and is not aware of you weren't? Right? Okay. So, I don't want to hear from you. Though. But you can act on his You're behalf. <laughs> okay. There's no changes to this, right? No, the same. So just for the record, we're going to appoint uh, Rich to act on behalf of uh, Ed for this particular application. Okay. All right, we're back to where we were. So. You're up. You're up again. I would be happy to set up, well, first of all, for the record, my name is Kevin Grindle with Anchor Engineering, representing the client being the boss. Uh, I'd be happy to set up an easel on that where we can once again work off the reduced size copies, uh, whatever your preference is as commission. The only, the only thing I was interested in is um, that isn't on this. It was the detail of that uh, the level spreader outlet. What, what is that, uh, is that the edge of it? What is it? Is it? I, I mean, I, I just didn't see the detail of it. I know I had it at one point, but... Yep, the, the cross-section of, of that level spreader is a grass berm. Okay. Uh, so that the intent is the, uh, the velocities leaving that detention basin will be low, and the, that level spreader is approximately 135 feet wide. Okay. So low velocity <clears> through that grass line level spreader, and then uh, I would be overtopping uh, a grass berm uh, into, uh, into the existing woodland. So it's just grass? It, in that area, once into the level spreader, yes. So uh, do you have concerns? I, I, I've, I've always experienced the getting grass level um, nearly impossible and will last until the first frost. Mm -hmm. And then, I, then you basically have trashed your level spreader and now have a low spot. Um, to the board, I would suggest you, you can put a six-inch you know, concrete curb in, bury it to the height of yeah. the, the discharge, you know, on top of stone, uh, and that leaves you a permanent, relatively permanent, uh, straight edge and level edge. I agree with Rich on that, only because I've built a bunch of these. This is one of the longest ones I've seen, but the outlets, the minute a stick falls and a few leaves pile up, uh, you know, you can't control it, and all of a sudden it's running in one spot or two or three, and then suddenly one, and, you know, it starts out good, but it, it, I just think you need something rigid. And uh, that, that, I mean, because 135 feet long, that's one long length. 
Rich, is that standard practice for a level spreader? Or? There's a bunch of standard There's practices for a level spreader. It's not really defined. Um, there is some. But usually stone or concrete? Uh, concrete is expensive and serves the same purpose, but I, I, I've seen both. Yeah. I prefer, you know, a hard edge because, you know, it, this is an area that, you know, so somebody comes up with a bike or something and, all you know, the, the idea of a level spreader is it's level. You, you've got to do something to maintain Change. it being level because once it's not, you might as well put a, a pipe in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't dispute anything that was just said. <clears throat> One option would be grass, but you can go as, uh, as, uh, as far from that as you choose, whether it's, um, whether it's stone or up to a concrete curb. Um, obviously, concrete is uh, is more willing to be spread level and uh, and and maintained. So, um, uh, would be in support of any any preference the commission has on that. Okay. Uh, did anybody get out there and walk that site? Because we had a rain out there that yeah. one no, night. I made a in there terrible attempt, but no. It's I, much too grown in. Well, I, I went in there today and looked at the whole thing. And uh, I mean, this is a famous area. Now, you're familiar with it because you just own one of these properties down here, right? Now, I saw where the water bled out that used to go into your backyard down there. And there's like three seasonal stream beds that are there. They're dry as a bone even after the rain we just got. But you can see water, once it gets going, it's going oh, hard. It's terrible back there. The one thing I wanted to know is uh, there's these seasonal stream outlets that run down through here once you get farther back, another hundred or more feet back from where this would be. Here being the western end. Uh, is that west there? Yes. And uh, down, down gradient. And uh, does anybody know where that crosses the road? Yeah, so I can, I can tell you. This, okay, let's this hear Actually, that. your father called me two decades ago, <laughs> and I, it was pouring. I mean, it was like Well, heavy, I've seen it come out of your driveway. Just heavy like rain. Rock. So, yeah. so there's like three rills there that go through yeah. that, that are in the soil. And I started off at that property at which if you looked at it would be a couple houses up from Cumberland Farms, the vacant building on the corner now. That one runs in a line that goes up from the houses to this area and actually exits, it, it starts actually between the apartment buildings that are now owned by Moss. On Plains Road. Okay, so, so that's that's, one. Yeah, that's that discharge from the street. That, that discharge, and it just discharges in the yard. I'm familiar with that one. I've worked on that one. And too. sheep flows out into the to the street. But this plan catches that. Catches channel, that. Channelizes, formalizes that. Right. The second spot that it discharges was right through what is now. If you went past Cumberland Farms, two properties or one property actually, it actually sheep flowed across the Northams property. It's that house that has that vacant little storefront out there, yeah. white building. They called me at the same time. I said, well, I might as well just follow all this. Literally, it was a four-inch sheet flow over the entire yard. Took up, And the last one ends up behind Shanigan's. That's it's that vacant yeah, building. big one there. Yeah. yeah. Now, where does that cross? Shanigan's is the one that's right place. next to it. It's the vacant. It's right next oh, to it. you don't know those things? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are we getting close to wigwam at this point? Or? No, no, we're, we're not. not no. Wigwam out of all of it thing is way They off. get the least because they right least. behind this, the existing field is kind of this one on the left where even though the grades aren't correct, that's kind of an existing field. Yeah. But behind that, that ground's a little higher, like right behind even Kabar, because this what it looks to me is there's some winners and losers and who's going to get the water. Well, actually... Right now, where those 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 rills are, they're in the same area. But the only difference is, is that's why I insisted, since I had historic perspective, is that the basin be over designed to deal with this. That, that's uh, my concern. Would be that judges just, just looking at where the water is going now, mm -hmm. and we're going to be clearing. And even though we're leveling up the fields, I mean, at some point we're taking direct pipe discharges into the detention basin from like behind the new building there. Mm -hmm. I looked at that today. And these other ones, like the moss runoff and all that, that'll go directly in. Uh, right now, that's running all over the land and maybe being diffused and absorbed. Like, even after that rain, all that was pretty dry in there. There is a, like, a little sitting wetland back there. But I hope it's big enough 
to slow it down, to detain it long enough so that, and we let it out slow enough that we're not going to increase the runoff. I mean, I know calculation-wise you probably have it that way, right? That is correct. No increase. Uh, no increase and a significant decrease based upon the calculations. Significant decrease? Yes. Well, that would be good because... Uh, yeah. That never, that never dried out until July. It was wet all through yeah. spring. Well, it wasn't. Run None of them were running today after that rain. So I mean, it's been pretty wet, and they were not running. But there is a there was a trapped water area, you know, yeah. a little mini pond, and right. just off of where this is going to discharge. The thing is, it doesn't go too far beyond where the level spreader is, and it's going to get right into these seasonal streams. Mm -hmm. There's another stone wall that runs along in there and whatnot. But you notice the biggest oh. stream kind of followed the old. Fence line. Yeah, oh yeah, ran right along line. it like it was almost a road or well, something. Well, the fence line caught the leaves and the debris, and so it just shot oh, it down. shot right down there. Yeah. But if, if, if the pond functions and the level spreader functions, then even if it ends up back in the old stream bed, it will be decreased from the pre of the existing conditions flow because you ameliorated it through the pond. Well, if we can if that's reduce correct, it or slow it down, it. that's a plus. <laughs> My concern is that we're direct discharging into the pond kind of quickly all these where these were running over the surface, all of them. But they're channelized. Not up in these uh, areas. Uh, Not up in these areas. Uh, Not until you get down in here is where the channels are. So and th my concern would be that... Uh, what would be the option if we find out that, okay, we put this in and there are some issues? Would mm -hmm. we go with a, like a leaching field uh, to, to recharge water from these directly from these basins and then overflow that into the, I mean, that would then be an option because the fields are coming up, so you're going to have some high dry ground there, which sure. right now you probably don't. The, the fields are going to come up. Uh, between each of those catch basins, there's also a curtain drain that under dry conditions, uh, could very well service or function as infiltration mm -hmm. um, under wet but conditions. That's obviously. when you don't need it, though. I mean, you know, that's going to function that way when we don't need to recharge. I mean, it's worst case conditions. It's wet as hell. The, you know, the curtain drain will be working, picking up water and discharging it, and rather than absorbing it. I'm just saying. It just looks to me like. This is questionable. Well, I, I, I'm not so sure that this will be. I'm sure the calculations I, are fine, but I, I mean, unfortunately, you know, the fact is, is when we went to wetlands, you know, we spent money on both sides of the table, from the consulting and then with our consulting engineer to make sure that this was oversized, and that's what the conclusion is from the okay. engineers right. that it's oversized. Can I ask a couple questions? Yeah. So, when does the level spreader? What storm event does the level spreader start engaging? The stage discharge starts at a two-year storm. So and then that, that discharges over the level spreader. Over the level spreader, I cannot speak to. Um, the detention basin starts functioning at the two-year storm. I cannot speak to when the level spreader so over time. When you say start functioning, which outlets are you talking about? The, the ones lowest. at the very bottom? Yeah. The ones at the very bottom. And that discharges to what? That discharges to the level spreader. Spreader, yeah. Okay. So through all storms, the discharge enters the level spreader. Okay. I cannot speak to at what point it overtops that level spreader. And do you have the, the existing and proposed flows for the two 25, 50-year storms on yes. you? Can yes. Can you I do. enter those to the record, please? They were part of the wetlands application. Right. right, but it's also in P&Z, and there's questions regarding if this is going to work properly. So can you, I, can, can you, can, you can ask that everything from the Wetlands Commission I, be entered. That, that's fine, record. but I'd like to hear what they are, too. No. Can, I, can I get that? <laughs> the discharges for the 2, 10, 25, and 100, uh, the difference in discharge speaks to a reduction of 0.65 CFS for the two-year storm. Which is how much percentage was, roughly? Uh, we're going from an 8.6, uh, excuse me, a 9.23 to an 8.63. For a 10-year storm, we're going from a 22.57 to a 16.28 for a net decrease of 6.29 CFS. For a 25-year storm, existing is 31.91. Proposed condition is 20.51 for a net decrease of 11.4 CFS. And finally, for the 100-year storm, in existing conditions is 47.05. 
proposed conditions is a, is a 26.59 or a net difference or a decrease of 20.57 CFS. That's what you refer to as significant? That is what I'm referring to as significant, nearly, uh, nearly half. Yeah. Uh, once again, 27 to 26. Yeah. Um, that is the primary uh, drainage area that this detention basin is treating. There are also two ancillary uh, uh, drainage areas, one to, the, uh, one to the north and one to the south, that also show slight decreases. Uh, but those are effectively what are going around the fields on both sides. Okay, and just assuming that there's an, an issue at some point, what would be the simplest modification you would do? Like change those outlets on the de on the structure for the detention basin to alter the flows or slow them down or something like that? Is that what would be the simplest? In other words, we find out five years from now, wow, it's built and there is some issues down gradient. Because that's what concerns me. It looks like it's all discharged to this one side where the water seems to have most of its outlet anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, like, for instance, Cabarro's over there, he looks like he's going to miss more than he was getting because they shifted all this water over to here. Now, even though you control the outlet, it's all going to be dumping out up behind Shanigans and all that. It's got to go there. That's where it's going. Even... And can we control it enough that it's an improvement for them? That's that. My main concern is, then, what do we do if it isn't? So you let know? me ask a question. If we were to modify the discharge and, and have some discharge over here, does it continue that way? I didn't walk it. Or would it end up coming back? Um, I mean, it looks like what sheds down through here kind of just keeps going down through. He doesn't seem to have any channels over here. But over here, this is where most of it is. There's a stone wall underneath there. Yeah, there, that's not shown the, on this. It's, well, it's kind of covered up. It's, for it's, it, but, but there's a, a, a stone wall that's in there. That kind of has been acting as a buffer also from the properties. If you if, On the map, it's identified as 60C because that's a soil type, but that's Cabrera's property. Okay. And then just... Just the terrain west. up behind him kind of deflects it off to the right-hand side, and it's mainly... Right behind Shanigan's, obviously, it's going out in what was B Lot's store, and then over to right. your house. Rich, what do you what are you suggesting? A second level spreader off in uh, the other well, direction? Well, if, if Jim has that big of a concern, no, I, I, my concern that's a is can we modify it to yeah. adjust? To what what's left for us to do if for any reason this doesn't work as good as it's supposed to? And oh, you mean in the simplest way? Yeah, what's the simplest thing that can be done pretty quickly? Say, okay, we do have a problem. What are we going to do? Because let's face it. We're not changing any of the uh, any of the structures that cross the road, so this thing better be under control to cross the road. Or it's going to blow over the top of whatever's down there. In other words, whatever culverts are under 149, it's got to fit in there. I, I just okay. I mean, I mean, I like the concept and all this stuff, and I see the big detention basins a, a good idea, and I've done a few. The the grass uh, level spreader. I'm with you. It's got to be something hard. Because it only takes a stick and a leaf and starts cutting out some little spot. So that is a big plus. It is a long, wide level spreader, but it's all going to, in another hundred feet or more, it ends up in those few areas. Because once it hits that, it goes through that stone wall, it immediately channels. So. Well, could I? We've asked the same question a couple of times now. Um, what is, what would be, not to hold you to it, because you haven't had a chance to do any desk work on it, but what would be um, a fix that wouldn't cost an arm and a leg if this doesn't work the way it's designed? There would be opportunities to modify the discharge points of that level spreader by increasing the length to the south and oh. thereby allowing additional yeah. discharge to the south. Yeah. Um, being mindful that the existing drainage area to the south also sees uh, decreases in the 100-year storm from 14.28 CFS down to a 3.8 CFS. So there's a 10 CFS reduction, even in the area to the south. Mm -hmm. So we have opportunity for flexibility there. All areas are seeing a decrease based upon this Instruction. Those decreases were due to what? That you're changing the grades and 
No, no those decreases oh. are based upon the size of the bit, no. of the bit. Detention basin. Oh, on the size, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we okay. would have opportunity. Still from the detention basin down, yeah, okay. We would have, have opportunity to uh, to adjust the outlet of that level spreader either during construction or post construction if need be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, quite honestly, uh, if, if if there was a determination that there was a, a concern with this basin, my suggestion would be go in and clean out the outlets and perform more routine maintenance because that's typically uh, where these basins. Uh, falter first. Well, is there some kind of maintenance uh, narrative behind what you've designed here? Because, you know, what I see about detention basins is like the, for, the forgotten areas behind wherever, whatever they serve, and nobody ever looks at them for years until there's some failure, and then everybody's looking at it then, but it's a little late. Like if, if yeah. that was, then needs to be like mowed down there and right, kept up with. Right up on the, the front corner. Is One year maintenance. Yeah. Oh, oh, every so year they're going to go. Okay. Well, so as long as somebody is reviewing it and trying to keep up with it, because uh, it doesn't take much to screw them up with branches falling and, you know. Yep. Uh, the only other thing was uh, the issue that the, the neighbor mentioned about the drums. Now, you looked into I, those I drums. I went out there the following day. There was two issues. <clears throat> One was the, the drums, which there's two crushed drums, and if I had to guess based upon their size, they were probably leftover wax drums from the, no, no. the school when it was a school. Oh. Way back, probably when we were here. Um, <laughs> That's a long time. Yeah, that long ago. <laughs> yeah, long ago. Yes, yes, exactly. And Thinking about it, they're probably, you know, rolled out of the building and used for some sort of racing, you know, no. to go run around and stuff because they're old and they're broken and they're, they've been there for ages. The other issue also was the um, oil dilapidated tank. building. The oil tank has been empty for a long, long time. It was completely, completely empty. I'm starting the process. Uh, first, I got to get an electrician in to... See if it's still hot. Oh, really? Huh? And Come then on. after that, I'm going to discuss with the neighbor about gaining access to their property to demo the building and knock it down. So I just got to ask, I probably shouldn't, but so the oil tank's empty. It was emptied or it's empty? There is no <laughs> records of either way in the building file to determine that. There was no evidence of spill or breakage of the tank either. So... I mean, and there's no there's no odor in it. There was a, it, it was like a little heating unit that they had in there. Um, no evidence to spill. It's a cement floor. Okay. okay. Uh, so it, you know it's not oil soaked. Okay. It's a two hundred and seventy gallon tank. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Up the interior. Okay. No, oh. the tank was on the outside. Oh, but, but the no, no oil unit, sitting around it. Yeah, no oil up against the building. Well, the thing is with this job here, I mean, a lot of fill was dumped there over the years, and some of it's going to be moved around when we when we do this job. We could always have a note on the plan that if they uncover anything, it has to be dealt with properly or something. Standard, right, standard sounds, language, but... That's got to be somewhere in the, on the that set. That should be in there somewhere, so... That should take care of the fact that they uncover anything like a drum or something that has yep. got to be dealt with. Find out what it is and go from there. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah I have a... Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. I have a question or two, which I... Um, believe can be answered by the rec director. What's illustrated on this plan are three soccer fields. Um, so now it's spring and we're not going to play soccer, we're going to play baseball. So where the nets go? So, so that it, at this time, there's no no need is foreseen for a little storage building for nets and base and bases and backstops and that kind of stuff. No, oh, okay. I'm sorry, can Thank you introduce you. yourself for the record? Lisa Conrad. Anybody else? Uh, yeah. People here? Uh, go Actually, ahead. Can I? Have a, oh, go ahead. You want to get something? Did you give any thought towards the hall road? Do we know? How are we going to bring all this fill in? That's yes. my question. That was a conversation I've had with staff. There's uh, a note being added to the plan in regards to the surface treatment, uh, maintenance of, and removal of that all road once construction has been completed. But all construction activities will come off of Route 149 and not through in 
municipal complex now that it's officially the municipal complex and no longer the old uh, old school. Okay, now your turn. Go ahead. Thank you. Nancy Pinkus. A couple of questions. If you're going to be moving water from one end of the property to a catch basin, does that, A, because it's reducing water, groundwater, on one section, on these sections, where I am, on a shallow well, what happens if now all of a sudden the old home Okay. On the section that no longer receiving the groundwater okay. and the runoff. Where, where are you relative to this map? Because I'm not where are you. Oh, right Towns. Across your driveway. Towns. Just across the road. So the water's already wait, gone by wait. you at that point. So you're pulling from Newtown Hall, right? Yeah, this That's is the garage. This is the garage where the uh, uh, police, police cars are. Behind us. Okay, so I'm right here. Okay, so you're the one right next to the parking lot over here, on uh, right over no. there. No, but what you I'm look, saying. When you pull out of the parking lot. You're, you're looking at my driveway. Oh, you're, oh, you're upgrading of this site, so that would have no effect on you. Right, but what I'm saying <laughs> is, the homes down Wigwam. Oh, and down up, here. Because you're pulling. Oh, whether water. they would, they whether they would have an issue. Because now water. they're losing okay. water that would normally feed. Uh, well, that's an interesting point relative to uh, Cabarrus. Because it seems like now you're going to take okay. the flood water and runoff from one section of the block and now yeah. dump it on the other section of the block. I guess I could say for the record, if the water they're receiving is the storm water from the state highway and everything that's coming off of the, this bar, this area, when it was a school and is, is now as a municipal, it's not the water they want to have infiltrating their well, per se. Well, it, it would have to soak into the ground, and then it becomes well watered yeah. down gradient. There's no doubt about that. I mean, it's, at some point, that's been happening. But Is the detention pond lined? Lined? Uh, membrane lined? Yeah. No. Oh. The, detention, the detention pond will see infiltration. So all the water that is infiltrating into the ground today will still infiltrate into the ground. And all of this stormwater is only collecting this official runoff during storm events. We're not redirecting any groundwater. Uh, but, but the rainwater eventually becomes the groundwater. Yes, but and the rainwater will still become the groundwater in this case. Actually, you'll be holding it on site longer. That is correct. So the detention pond will hold yeah. the water longer on site, promoting more infiltration. That's one thing that they are trying to do. The detention pond is going to hold the water in something it can soak into longer in order to try and not increase the runoff. So that's one of the things that's being done. I mean, they're, they're trying to get less runoff. So that would be more infiltration into the ground. I would think, I mean, I know where Cabarra is. They're way down gradient. So, I mean, it's quite a ways before. Uh, this pond could easily feed their well. And, I mean, these people are over more toward Wigwam, which obviously is a monster hill. It's not going to affect anything behind Ricky Shays or any of that. It won't affect him. This is only water that's not going to be absorbed. Well, she's it's talking about the possibility that well water down gradient would be affected by the fact that we're diverting water a little bit. And uh, if the wells were directly behind it, I would say that's a good possibility. But they're quite a ways down gradient, and we are going to recharge with that. To, believe me, that's a big part of that detention pond, is to during, get the water back in. During a storm event, runoff, if you, once you start experiencing runoff, you've pretty much saturated the ground, so infiltration is dropping to nearly zero at that point in time. So the water running off is running off because it can't get into the ground. And what this project actually will do is, is stop that water, hold it, and promote more infiltration. Especially in the summer when actually when the well issue would be uh, the big deal that everybody would be worried about, that's when that detention pond may not have any out, out, water going out of it because it'll all be trapped and then be running you know, basically soaking in, uh, and because that's the whole concept behind it not increasing runoff. So, probably, and there's quite a distance back there, so I just walked it today. It's quite a ways down before you get to their back property line. Yeah. So, I, I would think they'll, they'll be safe relative to that. That would be my guess. Uh, the retention pond, is that the all I can think of is like a giant swimming pool? Mm -hmm. So is it below ground or above ground? Well, go ahead. You can explain that because to them. Because the okay. last meeting you said you weren't fencing all the way around. Well, it's a dry pond it's a that big will hole fill up when it rains. That's the idea behind it. And hold the water and 
either very slowly discharge it into an outlet or not even let any of it out and let it soak in. So you can explain the whole theory behind these. The, okay. Yes, and you're absolutely correct. The intent here is it's a dry pond, a dry basin, so that there are normal conditions, there's no water in it. Um, it will be constructed, if you were to go out there today, the ground you would be walking on would be the bottom of this basin, and we'd build up a berm on the sides of it to hold the water. Um, those sides would be sloped at a, at a two to one side on the uphill, a three to one slope on the downhill, so that you could easily walk into and out of it. Uh, so while it would be holding water during a storm event, the intent is it would dry quickly or empty quickly, and it would be a grass line depression during most conditions. But how high are those sides? Four feet. So if a child, a dog, mm -hmm. a cat, mm -hmm. a wild animal, Mm -hmm. Accidentally fell in or jumped in. They could easily walk out. Yeah, they're sloped, sloped. not so they're that sloped. so it will not erode. So that's that gently sloped, and definitely not vertical. So that it's not a trap. A, a three-on-one slope is a typical road cut as you're going along Route Two, and there's a grass slope. That's typically a three-on-one. Sometimes they're two-on-one, but typically a three-on-one. So. If you can walk off the side of a highway, you can walk up this slope. Yeah, you could walk into the water, but you should be able to turn around and walk out if you don't want to stay there. So, I mean, it's not, it should not be a trap. I never said my dog was bright. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a blue moon, she gets loose. She, in case she, anybody she'll, she'll be wondering, able to... when you walk to the parking lot and there's a hound barking her head off <laughs> at you, that's my, my dog. <laughs> Your dog should be able to walk out of this. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just that's my last. Okay. This is public. Um, I'm totally against demolishing the woods, cutting down 20 acres. It's beautiful wildlife habitat. That's why I moved here. Animals travel from the woods in the middle of the block to the woods in the middle of the block, and I like to see a fox, a rabbit, the deer. Nature, just walking through my yard. And we're going to lose that. And there's going to be upkeep and maintenance well, besides the initial expense oh, yeah. to level 20 acres. Drainage basin is a different issue because I live here. I know water is, is good and bad. But still, you're going to have fields. They're going to have to be mowed, maintained, fertilized. Stripes, equipment, there'll be ongoing maintenance, and this storm drain basin is going to require additional maintenance costs. Okay. So I would rather keep the woods as woods, okay. where right now there's no maintenance cost. Okay. Are we actually clearing 20 acres? No. It's, it's not 20, but the whole site is or something. The overall right. clearing is 7 acres. Yeah. The field area will be 3.5. And there will still be woods on the lower side. That's undisturbed. That's one of the issues. Well, I've the already thing. lost my deer trail right through my property from when they had the construction fencing up. Yeah. I, I, just from what I know about deer, I don't think this is going to stop them. <laughs> it's going to be open fields. So it's all attractive. I mean, yeah, they, <laughs> you know. because they travel at night. And oh, yeah. They'll be, they'll be out there on the field. It might so. be because the coyote that's really large when we leave these meetings, he's sitting in like, the fence. Who was with me when we saw that? I saw a huge it, one yesterday. It, you, right here. Look, he's making like his way right shot. along the well, track. Well, send him back on my side. Oh, he did go. He did go oh, your side. Just to let you know. How big's your dog? <laughs> He's six pounds. She can take a coyote. <laughs> then she sure didn't have to walk out of this big basin. So I'm a little concerned with the way we're going to get 1,000 trucks. Yeah. Of fill in this. Well, it's oh. actually 750, but anyway. 750. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't bring my Wait, wait, right. you modified that? Right. No, I figured out what the yardage yeah. worked for a truck, and that's what it will be. I mean, so to get 12,000 yards right, on 750 that loads. Okay. So, so you, have a, you have a roadway that has 5,000 vehicles per day on it. I 151. On, on 149. 149. 149. Yeah, 149. Yeah. And I imagine maximum trucks would be 25 to 50 a day. Absolute maximum. What time of year? 
Well, this would be done when, in the summer they because pass, you're not going to deal money. with this yeah. when the water's running. Yeah. I mean, you would. This would be a summer job. That's a pretty yeah, steep slope well. they got to go up. Yeah. Well, but that's why you. you well, it's going to have to be a stone gravel it and really stone it probably yeah. because of uh, the issue would be like that storm the other day, where it rained like crazy for right. like a half an hour. Well, you'd have to stone this so real way. So otherwise, you'd have a bunch of silt running around. There's the a significant prep going. Oh yeah, this. I mean, it's a big job. So this, you know. I've seen that right now. That's so overgrown, you can't even walk in there. Kind of. Like, yeah. I, don't want to do I know. I looked. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Pretty bad. But I've yeah. seen it before that, and it's, you know, it's negotiable. Yeah. Yeah. And you're saying maximum twenty five a day. As staff said, twenty five to fifty tops yeah. a day, and that's and, you just, and that's slower. You just went to fifty. I did. No. 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 <laughs> yeah. Twenty five. Twenty five to fifty is. Yeah, you think about it, Jim can maybe speak to this better. I mean, there's well, only so you, much you can get you're on You're going to run, a, when you're doing the fill, let's say you get to the point where, okay, you need this 12,000 yards of fill, you're going to try and do it as fast as you can. Right. So, That's assuming there's a source of 12,000. Get it in there, move well, it. Well, this is what they calculated. Right, right. but this might very well, the construction of this might very well stretch out over, I don't know, they, well, that was my second phase. Oh, it, it could be broken no. into phases. Yeah, it could why, be. why would you stretch it into two? Oh, no, you're going to want to complete it because on fill? when the water comes up, when the rainy season hits again, this thing better be done. But you're assuming that there's a deadline to get it done. No, I'm saying that you would not want this opened up and not grassed on these things or any of this well, finished we, when the rainy season well, hits. We're getting into means and methods, but why couldn't we bring in, I don't know, 3,000 yards of fill because there's a... You know, what are we worried about about the truckloads of fill? Why? There's, what are you worried? <laughs> it's coming off State Highway, yeah. and it's going to be a road. Just that thing's got a plenty. I mean, he just grassed out an area. What, what is that total width? <coughs> he says twenty feet. Twenty feet. Yeah, but the the width of it is I think fifty or something, right? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's as wide as any road right away. Yeah. So I mean, you could have a decent road coming in and out of there, and I, the I, idea would be to. Don't be driving into the town office complex with right. any of this. Right, stuff. right. And that would be the idea. Well, Do all this and not come in there. I mean, we're talking for a frame of reference. You know, if we're talking a truck every 15 minutes over yeah. a nine-hour day, that's 36 trucks a day. Okay. That's that. You're hauling material for 21 days. Okay. So you you've got four four weeks of weekday hauling and all and all the, the heavy truck traffic is done. Okay. So that would be a very reasonable time frame for bringing in that much material. And where the fill comes from is is not an issue. Not his issue. <laughs> what what mountain are we carving now? <laughs> no, well, it's there's two pits in town, mine and cones that have the material. The materials exist in yeah. town and approved pits. Yeah. Depending on what you want to use it for, that was another issue that that brought. I we talked about this 25 years ago, Jim, when we talked about doing this, but. Uh, is there any consideration that an area down in one of these fields toward the high end of the fill area where we know it'll be high and dry that that, that would be earmarked as our area where the fill would be septic fill so that if this complex ever needed a new system it could just use it? That, that not has not been considered. Okay. I think one of the things because you asked that question to me is that I reviewed the, the septic system that we're using right now was for dedicated school. for well, it was dedicated for 125 students, okay. and our capacity in here, you know, with, with the staffing is is around 50 at best. Uh, the only time I see a burst is in like actually it was a good exercise. The uh, board of education held their entire staff, and I mean everybody, custodians, uh, kitchen, everybody, teachers, you know, everybody was here all at one time, along with the town functioning. We did use the uh, overflow parking for it, uh, to do it. But that day and voting day is the only time you're going to see that kind of a carrying capacity in this, this site. So I yeah, think and even on voting system, day, people are here for 10 minutes and yeah, leave. And they're gone. And yeah. Who's using the bathrooms? I mean, come right. on. Right, <laughs> exactly. So, so, the, uh, so there should be no issue with what we have right now. It should last it's, indefinitely. As long as, the, you know, one of the biggest things, I was scared to death on it, and they actually listened to the notes. They they fenced the septic leaching area and didn't pack and drive over it. didn't drive over it. It's a, it a novel concept. idea. <laughs> so I, I think, you know, we have right now, we have capacity times two. Okay. The existing system. Just before I forget, there was one other issue because Ricky Shea brought it up the last time is this swale behind this emergency services building. 
Mm -hmm. I went back there and looked at it today. I mean, it's got, it must have sloughed in to the point where it's, yep. it's not it's jumping. so shallow. Water's running right out of it onto his property, so it right. really has to have somebody's got to either clean it out. And they could extend either extend well, the gonna, riprap. That's what's proposed, right? They're they're going to take it from temporarily from behind the backstop. They're going to start that point as a low point and reconnect it to where it used to flow. Now say that again, what, the backstop down at the lower the, level? The backstop at the lower level, so there's going to be a shallow, wide swale. Oh, there is a swale, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah but that they've got these two catch basins, which are probably swale-style double, yeah. Yeah. whatever they call those particular ones. But, but, but I'm saying that the swale behind this emergency services is being run into a uh, catch basin, right? That's what they at wanted. At the time of construction, yes. Yeah, so that can solve Rick's problem. With That'll the be water's running. Fix. I could see where water came out of that swale. Yeah. That'll be a permanent fix at that point. Yeah, is that a single or a double catch basin? This? Yeah. I think it's, it, it's, a, it's a single, but it's a CG. Yeah, it's that and double. The intent there is there's also a head wall. That swale is going to be replaced, be replaced with a head wall. So we'll receive the flow coming off this parking lot via head wall, and then the collection area there will be with the CG. Did you do an inlet, did you do an inlet analysis, though? That, that CG? Yeah. I can't speak to that, but I believe we did because that was a question the first go around the wetlands. So CG, are they the double-throated ones? Is that what they are? That's what it is, right? They're yeah, like yeah. Curve so on both sides, style with a different both ditches. Sides so that it yeah. it okay. still, still receives water even when they... Yeah, because the, the grate can be covered up and the double throats work great. Yeah. Exactly right. Okay. okay. That's, we don't use those on highways very often. Well, they're not on a highway, but they're off the road. <laughs> Anybody else with any more questions before we put this thing to bed? Okay. Well, I move that we close this public hearing. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? You can't second. I'll second. Oh, okay. it has to be your replacement. Your replacement. <laughs> yeah, you here for the last one. Aye. So, okay, so he's the second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> okay, so the hearing's closed. Uh, is there anything else that has yeah, to be, what are right. the contingencies or anything on this? I, don't I mean, the, the Wetlands Commission, you know, had, had comments. Yeah. Brian Curtis had comments from Bonnet. You want to put in there, I'm not voting because I missed the previous meeting. Yes. Okay, so, so uh, the only ones you're not, are you, you're, you weren't here either, right? Last meeting? Last meeting, I was not here. Okay, so yeah, you didn't. So you missed that because this is a continuation. Right. So it's Kevin and Lou and Ed who can't vote on this tonight unless you listen to the tape, which you didn't. I did not. Okay. No. All right, so anybody you want to jump up and. Bernie, try your turn. Motion to uh, approve the. Uh, 18-11, Town of East Tatum, One Plains Road, Special Exception Review for a Public Improvement of Athletic Fields. It says it's map 56, lot 38. Do we want to include a, a to condition that the, um, the levels better be concrete? With okay. the condition. So, so we, as far as conditions go, we want to, we want the, uh, uh, level spreader to be a concrete spillway, which could be an embedded curb or however you want to design that. But we want that to be a concrete spillway. And uh, what else do we want? We wanted a note on the plan that if they uncover any uh, buried items that are not supposed to be there, they no. should proceed uh, the properly. Proper disposal. And, yeah, notify the proper authorities and proceed. So other than those two, is there any other Then you have the conditions, the conditions of the wetlands. Yeah. Okay, okay, conditions then. of Brian Curtis, the consulting engineer. Okay. And that the notes for the access way be put on the final plans to become the main construction entrance. You got all that, Tony? I'm still on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Second. <laughs> okay, motion been made and seconded with those, uh, with that. <clears throat> Motion and conditions. Okay, for discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, okay, we're good. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. There were some conditions there. Okay, uh, we are basically, did you get everything on your CEO report? I did, I did. Um, 
Yeah, that was yeah, those three items for the. Okay. The, the only other thing, uh, just as a note, Johnsonville is having a church revival this weekend. Okay. Uh, they they went. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you very much. Rented a 200 by 100 foot tent, oh. and oh. they're busing everybody up. It's a morning ceremony, so we expect to see a lot of people. Uh, Good night, Al. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, there was one thing I just remembered is that on uh, Laurel Cove there, uh, that's the Kathy Quint's old lot there. Yep. Is that, uh, that had supposed to have a, uh, uh, the little water retention oh, pool there. Oh, it's supposed to have a lot of things. And I did, oh, okay. a, preliminary, right. I did a preliminary CO okay. walk. I'm like, and where did that go? Because you and I talked about that thing. Yep. The outlet of that was the discussion right. we had. And Which, uh, I'm sorry, Kathy who? Where? <laughs> <laughs> Laurel Cove Road. Gotta catch up. Uh, it's it's near the plan. big rock. <laughs> the, it, was an L, it was a site plan that yeah. came to us. It was site originally plan. designed by Roger Nemergut. It's got a rain garden. Had a rain garden. Uh, they're having issues with the contractor. Oh, okay. That's the best way I can say it. Uh, I'm not releasing a CO on it until I have an as-built. I have the, but before they do the as-built, they now have to do either two or three rain gardens. They have to locate a dry well that's buried that's nowhere to be found for the um, salt to do the water treatment system. Oh. Uh, they have to move a shed that doesn't comply with zoning. Uh, or, or oh. get a variant. So they have a they have a multiple of things that okay. Well, that, that was the only thing well. I drove by. I'm saying I, I yep. remember there's a rain garden there yep. because we had this long discussion about the outlet of it. Yep. And, and uh, because there's people down grading, there's one of the people down below them. Yeah. Yeah. And, the and, people and down and below so, would be concerned about it. So no CO was issued, and I told them that the rain garden, if they're going to put one in the back, has to be designed by a professional engineer, and not. Them. So why would they have another one back there? They because they ran the gutters already straight back. Instead oh. of connecting the gutters and running it to where they were supposed to, yeah, okay. they decided that that's not what they wanted to do and just ignore everything. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a... Oh, wow. You know, for I can a, relate to that, but... <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> but at least then, you know, come in and modify the plan and have it, you know, thing, but they just direct yeah. discharge it. And the, the one that's baffling is that there's a dry well for the water system, but they, you know, which isn't salt, you know, treatment, but they also decided to throw the rain water into that one, and when you look at the hillside, it's oh. wet. <laughs> okay. So, I, you know, it's going to blow. It needs to be separated. Well, those are so not very big. they were enough to tie their roof leaders into their salt system discharge, I doubt they were smart enough to put a check valve on the salt system <laughs> discharge. No, I I'm <laughs> telling you. <laughs> so, I've yeah. got 20 feet of fill, 20 feet ahead, pushing back against my salt system. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, not good, that, that's not good design. No. <laughs> no. Okay, so they've got their share of problems. That's, yep. Okay. That was just the one thing I had. Anybody with anything else? The yeah, bridge out in Devil's Hop Yard. When are they going to start on that? Yeah. Uh, on, on the falls? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the falls. They, they've it's gone coming. through wetlands. They did that a while ago. Isn't there Miners. conditions for starting that to so coincide with dry period? I, I think that's probably going to be next year. Yeah. Uh, and talking to the guys that are doing the bridge by my house, they are looking to bid that, so I don't think it's come out. Yeah. Hasn't no. come out for bid yet. So. No, I, I think it was, it was it's okay. been installed enough that it's it's Push already rolled road. in next year. The only good thing with the birds and bunnies discussion, more of it had to do with sediment and erosion control and, and that because because of the falls, there's no migratory fish going up there. So so they don't have as, as, as much like it's Hemlock Valley Brook. They don't yeah, have the same windows. Brown rocks. Yeah. So, right. and, and the other thing, too, is that <laughs> they can do 90% of the work out of the water. It's all going to be in solid rock. Yeah. yeah, yeah they're not going to chop was, down something. I went to the public hearing. There was there were deadlines in that. I don't know if it was due to park access or whatever. But well, that there too. is because the campground is on the yeah. other side. Yeah. I mean, there's I a think, way around, I think but it's miles the, around. The public hearing for that, the campground was closed. Yeah, they did open it, though. Yeah, now they have. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, how about 60 Smith, or the Smith Road 60 Smith, was it? They had two functions. We got no complaints or anything? No, he said more than that. He, no, he oh, there's been, and, there's yeah. been two big tents up yeah. that I've seen. Yeah, no, he said no, nobody's complained. That's what the sanctuary, they had something. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I know. Well, you know... See, this is the beautiful thing about the sanctuary. When you text me on I'm on vacation and then you don't say, hi, this is so-and-so, 
and you give me a number, and nowadays when you do reverse number, you have to pay to get right. it, which I'm not going to do it. I think the courtesy is, hi, this is so-and-so, I'm having issues with it. So I decided to say, well, it's after 10 o'clock if you're having an issue, call the police. Well, I didn't get this when happened. I got this is well, the sanctuary? Vacation. sanctuary? Sanctuary? Yeah. yeah. The weekend before uh, Labor Day. Yeah, it was uh, I didn't hear anything or, about that. Oh, well, late no August. complaints about that. Yeah, my friends heard it. They live on Bogle. Yeah. They love the music. <laughs> <laughs> they liked it. That's what really sounded great. They were chanting. Just yeah, John Turner. They were chanting yeah. when I was outside. <laughs> so somebody did complain. Again, huh? Well, somebody complained. But well, what, what is the complaint exactly? The, the complaint time? was that was the time it was late. And I said they yeah. call the police. Yeah, could they I said because I'm in Maine right now. <laughs> they, I can't respond. They possibly have violated the times. I mean, they didn't get the picture or what? Can we buy them a digital clock? Apparently, they can't buy the damn clocks. Well, we went round and round about their violations, and they said they were going to comply, and all they have to do is Well, that's where you need with a it. police officer to go out there and verify that. Well, and, and I didn't get the police department to come and say, hey, Jim, when you get back from vacation, right. we have to discuss the sanctuary. I didn't yeah. get that. Okay. Yeah. So they probably didn't call the police. Of course he did. It wasn't that important then. No. <laughs> they just wanted to see if they could wake me up, which was a big mistake, because yeah. they did. Or else it was before 10 o'clock. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, that's the time that they're supposed well, to... Well, then it's not outside yeah. the time zone. I mean, exactly. what, are, what, are, what are we so, complaining about? Okay. Well, I mean, if it is, it is. If it isn't, yeah. who cares? Yeah. I mean, they, they have times to comply with. If they're in compliance, sorry. You live next to the sanctuary. That's the way it goes. Keep an eye on them, Lou. Oh, no, I <laughs> He's far enough. I don't care what they do. Well, it's a couple of times a year. There's music at night. Yeah. and it for a while. It's not that bad. I didn't even know they had an Police event. Cars, fire engines, Anybody cars. else with anything for Jim while we have him trapped here? Okay. <laughs> no, that's good. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor. Opposed. Uh, 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 we are out of here. Thank you. Good job. Got to vote for that weather or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So.